Now, when I was 10 years old, the Salvation Army, and we all have experienced this somewhere, uh, some form in our lives. The Salvation Army lost its funding for its program. So my brothers, Eric, Emery, and I was forced to go, and I was the oldest boy in my household. My sister, Marcia, and Connie were much older than I. And so we was forced to go play at another place. My first day of practice, I was, nine, I was 10 years old, so I got on the scale, and obviously I weighed a little bit more than I was supposed to. And so they forced me to go up and play with 11 to 12-year-old guys. And so I had to play up, all because I was 10 and, and I was a little heavy. Not fat, but just a little heavy. <laughs> Never a fat kid, just had these big old legs. And, and I was one of those kind of fast maturing kids. We've seen those kind of kids, kids that mature fairly quickly. And so my first day of practice, and I was playing with a guy, playing with a coach by the name of Charlie Egger, white guy. Nice man. Guy that would go around in the neighborhood, pick up the players and bring them to practice and teach them. And all because that's what he wanted to do. So my first day of practice, I step up and they put these two tires down. For some of you old school players, you know this, you got a tire here and a tire there. You have to run between the tire. You got a guy on the other side that's going to hit you in your face. <laughs> so my first, I'm 10. This guy over here is 12 years old, big old white kid by the name of Billy Spriggs. I remember the name. <laughs> I remember the name. You remember a person's name for a reason. <laughs> so they say, Hut, they hand me the football. I'm running. Billy Spriggs over there. Pow! We collide. He hit me so hard. I get up. I got a, like a little headache and everything. Ears ringing. They jumping around, patting me on the back. I'm like, yeah, great job. They patting him on the back. And they say, do it again. I'm like, oh, no, coach. I don't want to do it no more. I don't want to do it no more. I mean, they say, no, do it again. I'm like, no, coach. It hurt. It hurt. I think I had my first concussion that went undiagnosed. <laughs> but then they say, do it again. So coach put his arms around me and said, listen, you're going to have to stay between the tires, but you don't have to let him hit you. So I line up again. Billy Spriggs sitting over there smiling. <laughs> the spirit of intimidation is all over me. <laughs> And I'm looking at this big old white kid, and I'm like, God, you gotta have to, you're going to have to help me. I line up. I say, they say, Hud, I take off running. He comes at me. I sidestep him. He falls on his face. I take off running for the touchdown. Now he's jumping down to pat me on the back, and I learned a very valuable lesson. Avoid contact at all costs. <laughs> at all costs. At all costs. And I've been avoiding contact at all costs from that point on. But, the spirit of intimidation, seeing things that are bigger in size, faster, might have talent that's superior than yours. But learning how to mentally overcome those things. My mother told me years ago, when I was little, I was struggling with some math homework, and I said, I can't get this. She said to me, never, ever say the word I can't. It limits your ability to be effective, no matter what it is that you're trying to do. You're going to always have to work hard. And you might have to work harder than others to get to this next place or to overcome or to learn something. But you can do it. Yes, it may take you two more hours to learn a little bit of math problems. Yes, it may take you some more hours to do this. And yes, it may take you a little longer to take that test. But don't be embarrassed. Be effective in doing it. Be diligent about what it is that you want to do and do it on purpose. And do it with a mission. And do it with an expected outcome. Do it that way. And along the way, learn to develop these consistent characteristics of who you are and who you really want to be. And allow those characteristics to shine brightly. Because each and every man in here, and if, you are, if there are women in here, each and every one of us are clothed with a measure of talent and a measure of skill. You just have to tap into it and hone it and shape it into what God has called you to do anyway. And through this process of learning and this process of overcoming, 
this process of maturing as a young man, you're going to gain more confidence than you could possibly imagine. We'll be right back.